it's time to set the joist. I've got them all cut behind me. Let's grab the nails we need for this and go ahead and get started. Here is our first joist. First step is to crown the joist. Look down it and you want to put it so that the hump is up. Okay? so hard to get into. Okay. Crown your joist. I usually start with one end. So, put your joist in place and just put it, kind of eyeball it so it's square. We'll go ahead and we'll tack it into place. So I snug the, I snug the joist hanger up on the joist. You always want to make sure they're down and in all the way. That's great. Go ahead and get it nailed into place. Now what we need to do is we need to square the joist to the house in this orientation. Now we need to set this first joist square to the house. Okay, see how it can move back and forth? We need to find exactly where that goes so that the joists are square to the house so the deck is square. We are again going to use a three, four, five right triangle. You'll see us do. You'll see me do this all the time. It's my favorite way to do everything. So we'll measure three feet out. Okay. We'll measure four feet over, measuring from the same exact spot here. Okay. I'm gonna put a little nail in. Give me something to hook my tape on here. So, three, four, this measurement needs to be exactly five, which it is <laughs> exactly five. <laughs> cool. Well, that was easy. So, three, four, five. So, now we know this joist is perfectly square to the front of the building. Let's go ahead and put a line, okay, so we don't get lost. And we'll pin this end down. I nail these down with 316 galvanized. Okay, you can see how we got that line on there now. Beautiful. That's three toe screws, or sorry, use a nail. Three nails. Two on one side, one on the other side. Ah. <laughs> that looks great. What a nice little deck. At this point, this joist is set in place and it's square to the house. So we have our layout along the ledger. We need to match that layout out here. And this is where you just want to be really careful and double check that you're always on the right side of the line. So the last joist here is 23. So if I hook my tape on the outside, come over to 23. 
And I'm going to go double check that I'm on the right side of the line. So it's 23, yep. 23, the X on this side, okay? Now, from here, the layout, we'll hook our tape on this side of the joist, okay? Right there. And the layout is going to be every two feet with an X on the left because we're hooked on this side of the joist, okay? Two feet over, and the boards need to be on the left of the line. So two feet. Two feet, X on the left. Okay. Two feet, X on the left. Two feet. X on the left, two feet, X on the left, two feet, X on the left, two feet, X on the left. That's it. The last one we need to measure separately. Okay. Let's throw that end joist in now. Right down the joist to crown it. They're very straight, nice boards today. Okay. So we've got a mark here for this one and an X. We know that's right. So here. Bring the joist hanger up and nail it in place. Okay? And we actually just bend this around gently. Okay? And you can tack that in. So I can see I need to get in a little more. I'm going to give it a hit on the end. That's how I like to finish those ends out. Just wrap that around there. Great. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, it's looking great. So there's our first two joists. Um, Let's move the camera and set the rest of the joist, and then we'll put the rim on here. It's going great today. Light down the joist. Crown them up. Oops. There we go. Well, I did forget one thing. Um, I want to double check real quick the distance that this beam is from the house because this is my last chance to move it a little bit if I need to so that this overhang is real nice. So how we'll do that, we'll just go ahead and measure here. Nine and a half. And there could be a little bit of variety, a little bit of a variable here. I'm interrupted. Slam that in there. Yeah, see, I need to level this up here. So here, we're at 12. Nine and a half. So, 
so I was almost getting ahead of myself there. We could have just nailed all these down and it would... I was almost getting ahead of myself there, very close. We could have just nailed all these down and it would have been fine, but this overhang isn't quite perfect. So before you really fasten these down, it's your last chance to straighten this out a little bit. We've actually got three inches of difference from here and there, which seems like a lot, but it's not. I'll show you how to fix it real quick. It's, uh, it's going to be real, real easy. So we'll throw one in here, check this end. Well, I lose my tape measure. Oh, my God. Let's uh, straighten this up a little bit. better about showing my mistakes like this on YouTube because, you know, as a professional carpenter, you really shouldn't be making too many mistakes. But, I imagine and I hope that a lot of people building this are going to, or watching my channel, are going to just build cows for themselves. And you're gonna make mistakes like this. You gotta know how to fix them. Uh, most mistakes in construction are actually really easy to fix. So we'll just straighten this stuff out here perfectly. So this needs to go in a little bit. Okay. Put this at about 12 and a quarter. So the funniest thing is that the slight mistake here is actually that when I dug this last hole, I knew I needed to set the post nice and tight against this uh, root that was in there, and I actually set it right against the root. I should have spaced it about an inch away. So this will just take us a second. I will straighten this up. I am going to pull these three nails here in this joist so I can fix this. And this kind of sucks, but it's okay. Don't forget. Wow. It ain't coming out of this. Wow. Well, that shows you how, uh, how strong these three nails are. I can't even... Uh, I can't even budge that. Well... Let's just go ahead and get this fixed here. So you can't go wrong with galvanized nails. I mean, if you see this here, it's like, I can't pull it out. I have to get this six foot bar. That's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Totally ridiculous. You can't deny how strong nails are. Well, let's just get this perfect. You gotta kind of figure that this is a little bit more than I'd like to see as far as mistakes go for myself. Paying a 
attention and learning these little things like double check this reveal before you nail your choice down is actually part of what makes you a professional. So, you know, the perfect world, right? Everything's perfect. You're a professional. You did it right. The reality is when you go to fill in these holes and stuff, stuff gets bumped around. Maybe an employee kicked it, you know. Maybe the dog bumped it while you're filling it up, whatever, you know. Things change a little bit. You got to know how to fix it, okay? So, if you can fix it and make it perfect, then your job is perfect. It doesn't matter that you made this mistake, like right now. This is a mistake. I'm going to fix it to where it's absolutely perfect and my job is perfect. This is just part of the process. A lot of people don't understand that about carpentry. It's like, you know, it's like a hidden thing. It's like we actually make a lot of mistakes. And the difference is being a master, you know how to fix them. So we're going to go ahead and set this overhang at exactly 12 because that is what I had planned for here. Okay? Well, well, two posts uh, look good but this last post so these two posts looks good at 12 they're fine that last post is actually a little bit out of level and I'm going to show you how to fix it if you're doing this for yourself um, you know, it's your first time you might be pretty upset right now you know you think everything's going along great and then you're like oh god you know but don't worry about it The term shit happens comes from carpenters, okay? That's where it comes from. So, let's attack this one in. Okay, so we got this joint tied to the wall. We got an exact perfect 12 inch overhang. We're going to carry that down through the thing. So I need to go back and so I need to check my posts are perfect level and I can tell I'm going to change one. If you have to do this for yourself, you know, you're going to be like, oh man, you know, I messed up. And I did. But um, I'll show you. It's going to be like a 10 minute fix. It's just not the end of the world. So I'll show you here. Gotta get better about putting my mistakes. I'll often just turn the camera off and fix it. And, you know, if you wanna learn how to build, you're gonna have to learn how to fix your mistakes. So this one is tied into the house as well. knew I was a little off on that last one and I forgot to fix it. It's okay. So look, we're starting to stiffen up here now. We got a perfect 12 inches exactly. 12 inches exactly. Let's go down and get this last one in place here. So, 
this beam is now fastened in place exactly where it needs to be. This post is level, it's good, but both these end ones are actually a little tweaked. I'll go ahead, I'll just show you here and we'll just fix it. So this is a little embarrassing for me, obviously. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, if you build a cabin for yourself, you're gonna be dealing with this kind of stuff all day, especially if you're not a pro, so. Uh, you know, don't get down on yourself. I've been building decks my entire life. Literally, my entire life. I uh, still messing them up sometimes. So, here we go. We want this to be perfect. So we want this perfect. Doesn't matter if you make a mistake, if you know how to fix it. And not like patch it, like we're talking fixed. This is not, this, this mistake is gone. Okay? The only part of it that sucks is uh, the time you spent fixing it. But as long as you can fix it, you know, it's okay. So the mistake I made is I set this post close to the building a little bit too far. All I needed to do was double check with my tape to make sure that it was exactly five feet. I thought I had it what I thought was going on is that I thought this big root I put against it was actually already a little bit fast, past it, like 5.1. And I thought that I was going to have to fudge that a little bit. The reality was that root was actually about an inch this way. So I should have just, I had, I could have just put this right in the middle of the hole and been perfect. So we need this level. It's where it needs to be. It needs to be level. Hey, look at that. So the base needs to go over one inch. Okay. You can pretty much always fix this issue. In this case, it's easy because our posts are set directly in the soil. We had a big sauna tube and big foot footing and all that down there. This would be harder. You can still do it, okay? You can move big foot footings a little bit if you need to. Um, don't leave anything out of level in your foundation ever. Your foundation it needs to be level, okay? Everything. It can't not be level. So check this out. One minute. Seems like such a big deal, right? Two minutes. Uh, three minutes. So just stick down. Now you're close to the bottom of your post. Minute and a half. Take the big bar. And stick it in here. Okay. Move that post over a little bit. That is just about perfect. I need to go about a quarter of an inch more. Give me three eighths. It's just perfect. So you're generally, because you dug the bottom of that hole nice and flat, you're generally able to slide it over a little bit without changing the elevation. I might have picked that up like an eighth of an inch or something from where it was a tiny bit, but it's totally fine. That one's yelling over. You just back fill it so it doesn't move around. So, in the shipwright trade, boat building, they say the only difference between a journeyman shipwright and a master shipwright is number one, the master has finally learned how to fix all of his mistakes. 
And by fix, I don't mean patch. We fixed this, okay? It's not a mistake anymore. The post is perfect. It's in the exact spot where it needs to be. Everything about this is perfect, okay? The second part about being a master shipwright is that you finally managed to acquire enough clamps to actually bend a piece of wood onto a boat. <laughs> and they say that's the only two differences. And I'm telling you, it's actually it's kind of real. You know, my dad can fix any mistakes we made and I would make a mistake and kind of freak out. So let's just go ahead and let's go ahead and move that last post over there just so it's perfect. So I'll show you that one more time. Mistakes are hard to mentally deal with. It's not fun. That was actually pretty far out. Now let's fix it. You know. I would say these mistakes are probably harder for me to deal with because I'm a professional so I should know better than this. <laughs> but it's also like because I'm a professional, I know how to fix this. You know, so like, if someone came and checked my foundation, they'd be like, wow, he did a perfectly level and square job. I did, but the way I got there was not perfect. No one cares. is really just don't leave anything wrong, you know? I could have prevented this just by... I thought I was a little closer than this. I thought I was close enough. I could have prevented this just by being a little bit more careful to do my last measurements, the triple check. Dig a little more on this one. level I could come up a tiny tiny bit which is good because as I crush this over it might come up a little more so I'm checking here to make sure I'm not lifting it too much the postal digger is a really nice tool for this dug those posts deep. Nice. Throw a block of wood in there. A little fulcrum point here. There we go. Touch too far. 
look at that. So it's absolutely level up and down and absolutely level this way. It can actually come up at eight. Now, it's perfect. So, um, that's fixed. It's a common mistake you'll make is that your posts won't come out quite perfect. You need them to be level. You can't leave them tilted. You gotta get them perfect. Get them perfect the right time, be extra careful. What you really wanna do is have someone with a level and a tape to be holding it and checking it while you backfill it. Um, but if you do make a mistake, there you go, fixed. Let's go along and set all the joists in place now. And we'll nail them off. So, I'll do a quick recap. At this point, everything about this deck is perfect. The Posts are perfectly plumb. This overhang is perfectly 12 inches. It's exactly perfect in every aspect. It's level, it's square, everything. How we got there was not exactly perfect. Um, I'm sure if some real carpenters watch my video where I set these posts, they'll be like, oh, you were skipping stuff. Well, this is how I do it, you know. If I had a second person, and if I was really careful with measuring, I probably could have avoided that. But, you gotta think about times sometimes. So, okay, other than my bruised ego, you know, who cares, I'm fine. Other than my bruised ego, that only took me like less than 10 minutes. It took me less time to fix it than it is for me to talk about it here. You know, I could have taken more time getting those things perfect, and I should have. You should do it right. But I like to get stuff done I like moving through stuff. You know, at the end of the day, my methods all work. Could they be better? Yep. Am I always learning? Yep. But did I really do something wrong here that's like, oh God, no. I could have triple measured it, still could have come out off a little bit. <laughs> so, that was fun. Let's get these joys set here in place and nail this thing off and we'll put this rim on. It's really gonna be looking good. Okay, I'll give you a quick walk around to show you where we're at. Our next step is to put the rim on. It's a pretty fun process. Thanks for coming along here with me today. I really love building these decks. Um, I love building in general. Decks are really fun. Even when you make mistakes like I did here, uh, still really rewarding, really fun thing to build. So I'm gonna get my last pieces of wood up and let's uh, get this uh, rim on there today.